Okay guys, so I've got myself a new gaming laptop and I wanted to do a review of this thing but I also thought to myself, could I actually replace my entire PC setup with this laptop? Well, stay tuned to find out. Now obviously we've got the laptop here which clearly is in this nice little packet but we'll take a look at that afterwards. Yes, it's rather large but it does sport that little two-tone design on there. Can you see that? And obviously we will test out some gaming performance a little bit later in the video and run all the graphs for you guys. But there we go. You lot can see it first. Woo! What she look like? Good? Nice. Designed and engineered by HP. Check out that full-sized Ethernet port there, because the laptop is actually so thin, it can't support this, so it has to have this little lip that opens up. The screen is actually matte on here, so obviously we have our studio lights in here. Great for me when I'm playing Apex on the train. Now first off, I want to go display settings and see what we are actually working with. Yeah, so as you can see, 165 hertz there, and we have the option between 60 to save some battery if we'd like, but I'm going to keep it at 165. Okay, so we've got the Ryzen 7 5800H, 16 gig of installed RAM in here, and now let's have a look at our GPU. Can confirmed, Radeon RX 6600M. Audio, bang an Olsen speaker set in here. Let's see what that sounds like too. Okay, I was expecting a little bit more low end considering we've got bang an Olsen here repping the sound quality, but it definitely goes loud enough and it is super, super crisp. That is some serious vintage. I haven't once heard the fans yet, but we are yet to game. <laughs> So guys, I've got the laptop here and I'm not gonna lie, I've had it sitting around for a few days and it is really quite good. But my main question is, can this laptop actually beat my four year old desktop computer that I've been gaming and working on for the last four to five years? So in my current PC, we've got a Core i7 7th gen, 64 gigs of RAM and a GTX 1080 graphics card, which is water cooled. So before we get started with dismantling my setup and replacing it with this laptop, we need to open up a few games and a few programs on my main computer just to take down some benchmarks. Okay, so first off, Apex Legends. We are getting an average here of about 100 FPS as you can see. Now these are 240 Hertz monitors. So obviously that's not gonna be any sort of cap here. Yeah, I'm happy to call this averaging 100 FPS. Okay, so an average of 96 to 105 FPS for Apex. Now let's jump into a little bit of League of Legends, something a little bit easier to run. And as you can see here on the original gaming PC, we're getting around 235 frames a second here. So I've got a one minute 15 4K clip in the timeline. I'm gonna go straight away here and click render. And there we go, just like that. I'm gonna say that is 17 seconds rounded up. Heavy. What? Four years of evolution. Has what we have inside of here in the last four years been condensed down into something this size? Bearing in mind, this has a screen on it as well. Now, ports on this thing. This is where this is gonna get kind of difficult. So we have Ethernet here, full-sized. We've got a USB-A port, we've got display port, we've got HDMI, and then we've got a USB-C followed by a headphone jack and SD card slot. Flipping it around on the other side, we've got a little bit of Vintage and then two more USB-A ports. Now, this seems like quite a daunting task, getting this little laptop to run this entire setup, but the way I have things set up in here is gonna make this super, super easy. Let me explain. So we've got all these peripherals here, mouse, keyboard, obviously, and then there's a few bits here, even my speakers all connect to my computer via USB. Now, the way this differs is that actually underneath the desk, I have a USB hub. Now, this single USB can cable here is the USB that goes off to the hub under the desk, so that can be plugged in too. Right, to get this to work, I've had to buy this little adapter, which is a mini display port to display port. So this is gonna go in the side of the laptop here, and then, luckily enough, I've got all of my monitors labeled. So this is gonna be our left-hand screen, and that can plug in display port into our little adapter. Okay, there's one. This is working off the laptop. Does the mouse work? I literally, I literally haven't done anything. I've plugged in a couple of bits and everything. 
our Ethernet connection is absolutely solid, which leaves us with only our tests to do. So as you can see here, display number two, which is this one here, the main gaming display, via DisplayPort is connected at 240 hertz at 1440p. No way it pulls more frames. What? It's, it's the same, if not more, like it's... It's averaging 110, isn't it? Now, yes, these results are good, but we've got more tests to come. We've hit our first downside though, and that is the audible noise. Now, I'm currently wearing a lav mic, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to pick it up or not, but that laptop over there is sounding a little bit like a hairdryer. Um, guys, the results are speaking for themselves at the moment. This laptop is just completely maxing out the refresh rate of this screen. Like it physically cannot go any higher. I know this is only league, but come on, it's beat it's beat the gaming computer. Okay, so exact same clip here in Premiere Pro, exact same project. Let's go ahead and render here and see what time we get. Yeah, the PC is definitely going to win this one. Okay, so that is what having a full-size GPU that is water-cooled that's what it's good for, is these sort of rendering tasks. But the gaming performance is really, really interesting. And I think what we're seeing here is a difference in the spec of the actual graphics card itself. The actual card having more memory to work with, more VRAM. And as you can see there, 32 seconds. Let's talk pricing. So here in the UK, you've got this machine for just under £1,300, which may sound like a lot of money straight up the bat, but what you need to realize is in this world that we live in nowadays, to get a GPU with even half the performance that this thing has, you'd be looking around £800, £900, which makes that 1.3K really seem quite digestible, considering you're getting a full-blown system here. One thing that I didn't like about my previous gaming laptops is that they're so in your face with crazy RGB and textures on the back and everybody's looking at you thinking, what is that? And in my opinion, it doesn't look out of place in a boardroom, yet it doesn't look out of place in your teenager's bedroom whilst they're gaming playing Valorant all night. Now I'll turn the laptop on its side so we can do a quick hinge test for you guys. One finger, as you can see, works absolutely fine, but this is where my first complaint comes. Not sure if you guys saw that, but the hinge on this laptop, if this laptop is on your lap and you're wobbling around a bit, this isn't really the best experience. The actual screen itself has a great screen to body ratio, so there isn't crazy thick bezels around the side. There is quite a thick bezel at the bottom, but I think we can get away with this, with this design aesthetic. I like the size of the trackpad also on this laptop, laptop. Not often you get a trackpad this large on not only a Windows laptop but a gaming machine. That is nice to see. However, I would recommend that if you are picking up this laptop, do get yourself a nice wireless mouse because you don't want to game on a trackpad. This here is the Omen Gaming Hub that comes pre-installed on this laptop and is accessed by a hotkey on the keyboard. You get some quick stats here like GPU, CPU and RAM, but one thing I want to check out is the lighting to show you guys the different zones. So you have the left, middle and right zone and all of these can have their own customised colours as you can see. And then you can also choose a set of colours for the WASD keys so you can distinguish them if you'd like to. But back to what I was saying earlier, that screen wobble, you can really see it in the webcam. Now one last thing I would like to bring in before we close this video out is the MacBook. Yes, I know, controversial. However, there will be people looking at this laptop who are more creative professionals and just want to do a little bit of gaming and are wondering, do I get this over a MacBook? Now doing some simple Premiere Pro exports, these were the results that I got. As you can see, really, really comparable. Considering this MacBook, as in its current spec, is around two and a half thousand pounds. So £1,200 more than this machine. For £1,300, I really don't think you could go wrong. This thing is powerful enough to be a full-on desktop replacement for 99.9% .9 of people. And I think that is something HP should really be proud of. But anyway, guys, that's been the HP Omen 16. My name's been Alex. I hope this video has been entertaining, informative, and, and good to watch. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.